Welcome back to the Global Cycling Network. Coming up this week, news from Oman, France, Portugal, Spain and Italy. Chris Froome of Team Sky won the Tour of Oman last week ahead of some very big names. Believe it or not, this was his first stage race win overall since 2007's Me Out Britannia. Stage 4 marked the highest finish of the race up Green Mountain and it was here that Froome took the leader's jersey after finishing second to Joaquin Rodriguez of Katusha. The next day saw a barrage of attacks against Team Sky but Froome proved too strong for all of them, eventually taking the stage after a head-to-head -head sprint of Alberto Contador of Saxo Tinkoff. These two went on to place first and second overall with BMC's K11s rounding out the podium. I don't think it's going to be the last time that we see those three fight out for the honours this year. Once again GCN was over there to capture all the action. Meanwhile, back in Europe the season has well and truly kicked off with four races taking place last week. The Volta Algarve in Portugal all came down to the last 35km time trial. Going into it, it was Team Sky Sergio Enau who was in the leader's jersey, but Tony Martin of Amiga Pharma Quickstep showed us all why he's a double world time trial champion, taking the race by over a minute from second place rider and teammate Kwiatkowski, and easily doing enough to give him the overall victory. Over in France, the first stage of the two day Tour de Outvar marked a return to form for Torhushov, the ex world champion of Team BMC. However, second place behind Lars Bohm of Blanco was enough to give Arthur Vigeau of France de Jeu the overall victory. On Saturday, Filippo Pozzato took his third career win at the Trofeo La Guelia, the traditional Italian season opener. It was his first race in the new, very bright colours of Lampre Merida. Finally, Alejandro Valverde of Team Mobistar continued his strong start to the season, winning the opening 6km prologue of the Ruta del Sol in Spain on Sunday. We promised you last week that we'd bring you a full update on the news that Katusha received a World Tour licence after a successful appeal with the Court of Arbitration for Sport. Well, the UCI have just announced that there will now be 19 teams in the World Tour this year. RCS Sport and ASO, organisers of the Giro d'Italia and Tour de France respectively, are now faced with a difficult decision. Their two early season stage races, Torreno Adriatico and Paris Nice, are just two weeks away and it means they either need to accommodate an extra team or throw out one of the wild cards already invited. Katusha are obviously relieved and very pleased to have received the licence and their director sportif Valerio Piva gave his reaction at a press conference in Oman. Just after the finish I inform uh, Purito first and then the other riders. So that was for us uh, a big victory today. Now uh, there's a bit of confusion that, that hangs over all this with uh, what the UCI will do. I mean, they have to meet, the commission has to meet and decide on it's 19 not, teams uh, or 18 it's teams. It's not our problem for the moment. Uh, we're still two months uh, waiting on the, in this answer. And especially for me, I am really responsible about the sport side of the team and I need to make program. I need to motivate the drivers, so it was not easy. And, so for the moment we, we have a long term uh, vision of the season and for me that is important. The rest is a, is a problem from the UCI and how to solve this situation. A new rule for forks has been implemented by the UCI for 2013. Don't worry, this will not affect Didi the Devil. The new rule prevents team mechanics from filing down the lawyer tabs, small bulges at the end of forks which prevent the front wheel dropping out even if the quick release opens. This makes speedy front wheel changes a lot less, well, speedy, much the annoyance of the riders. Champion Systems rider Matt Bramier summed up the pro's opinion of the new rule, describing it as a pain in the backside, or words to that effect. Almost seven years after Operation Puerto uncovered a large doping ring in Spain, the case has finally been brought to the High Courts in Madrid. Ivan Basso and Yoseba Balocchi have already been called to the witness stand, but it was Jorg Yaccia and Jesus Manzano who gave the most damning reports against Dr. Fuentes. Alberto Contador is due in court on the 22nd of February in a case which is due to continue for a number of weeks yet. The World Track Championship starts in Minsk this week. The five day event has attracted a number of Olympic gold medalists including Laura Trott and Danny King. One of the most fiercely contested events should be the men's individual sprint. France's Gregory Bourget was famously very upset when Britain's Jason Kenny beat him in London 2012. This will be the first time since then that the two have met in competition. A few weeks ago here on the GCN News Show we mentioned the return of the Giro del Lazio. Details of the race have just been announced by RCS Sport in Italy and it will now be known as the Roma Maxima and finish in the shadow of the Colosseum in Rome. 
Taking place on the 3rd of March, the 180 km event will feature three climbs which peak at over 700 metres. The organisers have promised an epic and legendary race, and coming the day after the Strada Bianca, it's sure to be a classic weekend of racing, both the riders and spectators. Thanks very much for joining us on the Global Cycling Network. If you've got any suggestions or comments, you can leave them down below. And as always, a free subscription, it's just one click away.